everybody, Jason here. And the last couple days, I have been working hard to add some documentation for the custom themes, as well as some tweaks to the flow control, which is the control that we use for cover flow and for the wheel views. Um, and it's gone really, really well. We have a lot more options uh, available now as far as uh, the custom themes. The, it's a lot more obvious how to do a bunch more stuff. So I wanted to do a quick tutorial to go over some of that new stuff here. Uh, before I get into it, I will say that you need 6.9 beta 5 or later. Of course, if the, if the official 6.9 release is out by the time you get to this, then you're all set. But uh, make sure that you have at least 6.9 beta 5 uh, so that you have all these features available to you. All right, so for getting started here, let's go into the, uh, this is my Launchbox folder, and I'm gonna go into the Themes folder, and you'll notice after starting up 6.9 beta 5, um, and actually this is there in beta 4 as well, but it, it doesn't have all the latest stuff, but after starting up beta 5, you'll notice that a documentation.pdf file shows up in your Launchbox Themes folder. So I'm gonna open this up real quick and give you guys a rundown of what this is, what it looks like. Um, first off, we have a description of all the different views. So this is gonna be very, very helpful if you're trying to figure out, okay, where the heck is the view that I need to modify uh, for a particular thing? So this should really, really help with that particular thing, get you, get you in the right place uh, so you know what you need to change, what you need to work on. And then we have this is even more powerful and effective. We have data binding prop properties for the root games views, as well as data binding properties for the root filters and platforms views. So basically what this means is that every single property of piece of data that is available for you is listed here uh, for both the games views and the filters platforms views. Uh, and you'll be able, there's even an example piece of XAML here for each and every one, so you can use the example and just paste it in and get whatever data you're looking for really, really easy. So that's really, really helpful for you guys, I hope. Uh, so let me know if, if, if that's gonna be beneficial for you guys or, or if there's something else you need, but I'm pretty confident that this is gonna seriously help you guys, help you guys out quite a bit. And then, after we have the data binding properties, we have the flow control, and the flow control gives you a bunch of options now. Uh, there were Some of these options were already available, but having the documentation here for them all is very, very helpful as well. So for example, we have an example of, of a cover flow control, an example of a horizontal wheel, which is pretty new. Uh, this is the ability to do this was just recently added, and then your, your typical vertical wheel. So lots of good stuff that we've added in, in the last couple days here for the custom themes. Um, and we're not done, but this should get us uh, pretty close to where we need to be um, for you guys to be able to quickly and easily get in here and make some cool changes. So just to demonstrate some stuff, let's go ahead and open up. Um, I'm going to copy my default theme and create a new one. If it's going to let me do it. There it is. Okay, and then I'll just open up the project. Okay, and then in views, uh, I think I'm gonna just open up the uh, wheel games view. And look for the cover flow control. And we're gonna go down to uh, let's just let's try changing this to a horizontal wheel, for example, instead of the typical vertical wheel. Uh, so I'm just going to take this and copy it, really, and paste it in there. And that should give us instead of a of a uh, horizontal or a, yeah, instead of a vertical wheel, it'll give us a horizontal wheel. So it's really that easy now, which is great. Um, the other thing I'm going to do perhaps is resize things because a horizontal wheel isn't going to isn't going to fit very well in this. We're not going to do a whole bunch of restructuring here, uh, but we we are going to just 
tweak this a little bit. I'm going to say the width of this first column. Actually, let's leave that the same and let's set the width of this column to say uh, 20. So the details are going to be over here, a lot smaller. And then you have the wheel over here. Uh, obviously, this is not the ideal view. You know what, though? I'm kind of changing my mind. Maybe we should just remove it. Now nah, we'll leave it there. It's not just just know that this obviously isn't the best way to do this uh, because the, uh, we'll definitely we definitely need more restructuring in order to do a horizontal wheel. But this will get us there. Uh, so we'll save this and I'm going to start up my big box. Ha, this is something that uh, I've noticed recently. So you'll notice I have the documentation open. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the documentation. It says the process cannot access the file documentation.pdf because it's being used by another process. So that is a current issue that I will be resolving here very soon. So for now, just hit close and close out your documentation, unfortunately, before we start at Big Box. So my apologies for that. We'll get that fixed before the official release. All right, so here's Big Box. And we did the wheel games view. First off, let's make sure we're in the right theme. Um, so under views, I am in my default copy theme. So we'll back up out of here. And then in, in the wheel games view, we'll go into arcade. So here's our wheel games view. And you'll notice, beautiful, we have a horizontal wheel on the left. So it's just a matter of copying that out. Now the cool thing here is that we have all these properties that you can modify. So let's go through some of these properties. Uh, we have image type. And I, that should be obvious. There's a bunch of different image types. And in the documentation, it lists all the possible image types. You have curve amount. So we can set that to maybe do something crazy like 5.0. Uh, we have camera position, which defines you know how close the camera is to your, to your images. Uh, say we want everything really small. We'll do it like 9.0. Um, we have visible count, which is the number of visible items, the page size, the item Z position, uh, which relates to the camera Z position as far as how close the items are to the camera. Um, we'll leave those at 1.0 for now. We have selected item Z position, which is how close the selected item is going to be to the camera. Let's do something crazy like make it 5.0. And then we have spacing, which defines how close things should be, how close together things, sh things should be. So all those properties should allow you to do some pretty cool stuff. And then you'll notice here we also have this uh, horizontal wheel cover factory, uh, which is what defines the, the actual presentation of the wheel. By default, you have a data binding in there for that. So it just use the, uses the default uh, setting. But uh, in, other, in other words, I think if we control Z out of this, you'll notice by default it uses this binding cover factory which is going to give it the, give it the default cover factory for the view. Uh, but if you want to override that, you change up the syntax to do this kind of syntax here. All right, well, let's save this and we'll load it up and show you the tweaks. So we go into arcade. And you notice everything's a lot smaller, except the big one is a little bit bigger in relation. It's smaller because we backed up the camera. And you'll notice there's a little bit of, of a curve going on there as well. Although because uh, it's a small number of items, it's not that curved. So let's play with it again and make it a little bit more curved. Let's try curve amount of 25 and see what happens. There we go. So there's a little bit more of a curve on the wheel. Uh, and of course, if you wanted to curve it the other direction, you just use a negative value there and it would curve up the other direction. So there's all kinds of new uh, opportunities there for you to do some cool stuff with the wheel. Um, between all these different properties, you can, you can pretty much do whatever you want, uh, I would imagine. Uh, but let me know if you guys need something additional and I will take a look at that as well. Uh, lastly, before we end this tutorial, I'm going to go pull up the documentation one more time. 
um, and we'll scroll through just to go through these data binding properties um, some neat things you can do uh, for example if we wanted to one of the neatest things is the selected game dot completed thing um, so we can add this uh, to the just anywhere in your markup and it will automatically show the completed icon if it's completed or hide it if it's not so there's stuff like that I mean we have uh, different values for uh, you know your favorites and your and all the various fields on games as well as all the various fields on platforms um, so you can put whatever piece of data you want anywhere is really the point of all these new changes so I'm pretty happy with all this stuff. I hope uh, I hope you guys are too. Let me know if there's something additional you want, and we'll go from there. Thanks, guys. Take it easy.